G-protein-coupled receptors, or GPCRs, constitute the largest family of receptors, with more than 800 genes encoding GPCRs found in the human genome. This large family of receptors are very important pharmacologically, as they constitute about 40% of all the drug targets in our cells. GPCRs all have a similar structure, with seven transmembrane helices embedded in the plasma membrane, with an extracellular end terminus and three extracellular loops, and an intracellular C terminus with three intracellular loops. Endogenous ligands and drugs bind to the receptors either on the extracellular end terminus and loops, or if the ligand is hydrophobic, its binding sites may be in the transmembrane helices. Most GPCRs coupled to heterotrimeric G proteins composed of an alpha, beta, and gamma subunit. This G protein binds to the inner surface of the receptor as in, and is inactive when GDP is bound to the alpha subunit. This is the basal or inactive state of the receptor in G protein. In the example we are showing here, the GPCR is a beta adrenergic receptor and the G protein is GS. When an agonist, in this case adrenaline, binds to the GPCR, the receptor changes its conformation in such a way as to influence its interaction with the G protein. This causes the G protein to change its conformation opening up the guanine nucleotide binding pocket on the alpha subunit and releasing GDP into the cytoplasm. GTP, which is much more abundant in the cytoplasm, will then bind to the G protein alpha subunit. This exchange of guanine nucleotides activates the G protein alpha subunit, causing it to dissociate from the receptor and its beta-gamma subunits. The activated G-alpha-GTP then binds to its target protein to change the amount of a second messenger inside the cell. In the case of GS, its targets are adenylyl cyclases. These are large proteins with two uh, groups of six transmembrane segments, an intracellular loop connecting these two groups and a large intracellular C-terminus. Together, the intracellular loop and the C-terminus make up the catalytic domains of adenylyl cyclase. Without GS-alpha, the two parts of the enzyme rarely come together, and so the level of second messenger cyclic AMP is low. When the GS-alpha is activated, it binds to both the catalytic domains and stabilizes their interaction, making an active enzyme that hydrolyzes lots of ATP to cyclic AMP in the cytoplasm. The increase in cyclic AMP inside the cell stimulates a cyclic AMP-activated kinase enzyme, protein kinase A, or PKA. PKA is a tetrameric enzyme composed of two regulatory subunits, and two catalytic subunits. When two cyclic AMP molecules bind to each of the regulatory subunits, they dissociate from the catalytic subunits that are then able to phosphorylate substrate molecules in the cell. In the heart pacemaker cells, L-type calcium channels are regulated by PKA, resulting in an increased rate of heart contraction when beta-1 adrenergic receptors are stimulated by the sympathetic release of adrenaline. Signaling from GPCRs through second messengers is limited by a number of pathways. First, the stimulus to the receptor is not continuous, and when adrenaline is no longer being released onto the cell, adrenaline that is bound to the cell will dissociate and be degraded or taken back up into the nerve terminal from which it was released. Second, the G proteins hydrolyze the GTP bound to the alpha subunit, 
leaving GDP in its place. And this causes the G protein to dissociate from adenylyl cyclase and reassociate with its beta gamma subunits. Third, the cyclic AMP produced by adenylyl cyclase is rapidly hydrolyzed to AMP by phosphodiesterase enzymes in the cell. This will stop the stimulation of PKA and all of the proteins phosphorylated by PKA will be dephosphorylated by phosphatases in the cell. Many of the drugs that we use to regulate G-protein coupled receptors are antagonists that compete with the endogenous ligands and inhibit receptor activation. For example, there are a number of drugs that are antagonists for beta-adrenergic receptors, and these are commonly prescribed for regulation of hypertension and other cardiac conditions. These drugs are commonly called beta-blockers, and propranolol is an example of this type of drug. When a beta-blocker is taken by a patient with hypertension, it will compete with the adrenaline released from the sympathetic nerves onto the heart, decreasing the number of beta-adrenergic receptors that can be stimulated. In this way, there is less stimulation of the heart and cardiac output is decreased, resulting in lower blood pressure. Some beta-blockers, such as pindolol, have partial agonist activity. That means that when pindolol occupies a beta-adrenergic receptor, it partially activates the receptor so that there is less cyclic AMP produced than when the cell is stimulated by adrenaline.